I've been doing this job for quite some time, so quite you. <laughs> Uh, some months ago, when this uh, meeting came up, idea of this meeting came up, I wanted to attend this meeting. And I had really nothing to do with cosmology or gravity the way, the sense that you are doing it today and tomorrow and so on. I said, Ayuka had this uh, t-shirt which says, gravitate, it brings people closer. Uh, I said this thing, but I had nothing to do with the gravity and I really actually get charged and then you know that I end up attracting the opposite side of it rather than the <laughs> giving everybody or vice versa. So anyway, I wanted to uh, attend this and uh, I thought, how do I do that? And I asked uh, Patty and uh, that is, he, he had tremendous contribution in terms of uh, uh, science outreach. And I thought it should be highlighted. And uh, the story is that uh, Asim, and uh, Tirth actually inserted this particular uh, session. Well, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Patty's and his outreach and my work at the at Ayuka as well as in my present organization that is Nehru Planetarium of Nehru Center, and uh, where I, uh, I joined about five years ago. Uh, my first interaction, or rather, first I knew about Paddy was uh, 84, 86 when he wrote those wonderful comic strip, The Story of Physics, and which was published in the uh, magazine called Asian Age. And uh, uh, Science Age, sorry, not Asian Science Age, I'm sorry, yeah. Science Age, and this magazine was published from Nehru Center. I don't think it's a coincidence of any kind, but I think when he stopped uh, contributing, even the magazine closed down. But <laughs> that is the fact it has happened. Well, that was then, and uh, then I was, prior to that, I was working uh, at uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics. I was at Leh during that period doing site survey observations. So I went back to Leh, and Ayuka started, and I came to Ayuka. And uh, till then, of course, my interaction, I mean, I hardly knew Paddy uh, in that sense. Uh, my first interaction with him was that uh, Jasjeet Shrambo, uh, people like uh, the research scholars here, they used to have what is called the pep talk. And just around that time, uh, David Malin, I think many of you know, uh, from Anglo-Australian Observatory, had opportunity to, to work with him. And he sent us a wonderful set of slides. They were the really phenomenal slides, wonderful pictures of astronomical objects at that point in time. Uh, they, I suppose they're the last uh, photographic uh, images. Uh, so he sent, and uh, uh, since I got these slides, I just talked probably to Jasjeet and said, look, I got this wonderful slide. And he said, why don't we have a pep talk? And uh, you show these slides. I said, okay, fine, I'll do. And uh, to my surprise, it was in Bhaskara too, and Paddy comes in. And then I was a little skeptic. I was a little scared, actually, not skeptic. I was a little scared because he has always uh, wanted to be very accurate. And I was not sure whether I'm going to do a good job of myself. And then one slide was shown uh, in which this was the, I think, objective grating spectra. Uh, and they said that the galaxy is rotating and one part is coming towards you, other is going away. And one of the students said that, how do you know? And then I said, look, you put this grating, et cetera. So technical things, I, I mean, I did tell him. And then Paddy comes out and says that, look, here is a theoretical astronomer who asks the right kind of question and observer who gives the right answer. And from that day, I actually became a fan of Paddy. And that is how my, I started. Uh, well, uh, uh, after that, at some point in time, I think we had this, uh, uh, this uh, public outreach program committee. And I've been fortunate to be, as long as I was at Ayuka, except for one year, I had always been the convener of that uh, outreach committee. And Paddy was, uh, for a large number of time, he was member of that committee. Now, I had this uh, uh, think about the uh, committees that I, I saw, somewhere I had read that committees are the uh, people who waste hours and keep minutes. It was not so much, <laughs> we never wasted hours. It was very, whenever he was there, he was a very crisp and sharp uh, meetings. And uh, uh, one of the things that we discussed many things about outreach and I remember one particular incident and that is, uh, Somewhere in 1980s, the Lawrence Halls of Science, uh, they had come up with this wonderful thing called mobile planetarium. And we were trying to bring that planetarium 
sorry, they brought the planetarium to India soon after the total solar eclipse. And NCSA, the National Council for Science Museums in Calcutta, they produce, reproduce that planetarium. And I've been suggesting uh, that we should get it, we should get it. But uh, for one reason or the other, committee never uh, actually got the planetarium. And at some point in time, I think the, I, I don't know from where, but the orders came from top. And uh, then the chairman at that time, I think it was not you, someone else, I don't remember, but it was not you. So said that we should get the uh, planetarium. And then he immediately come out, this is what you wanted to get it for a long time, isn't it? Now you have it. So <laughs> that is how the, we got the planetarium. And the story of the planetarium is that I suppose this is one of the most used planetariums at Ayuka because at that time he said that come what may happen, use it. As it, use it as much as you can. If something goes wrong, something gets torn. After all, it's a flexible thing, it can break something that get torn, we will repair it, but use it. And we use a very novel idea in making the, taking the planetarium across uh, at least the state of Maharashtra. And what we did was that, uh, because at that point in time, it was me and one other colleague of mine, uh, we were working in the outreach. So what we did was that we trained large number of school teachers in Pune. We brought them to Ayoka. We showed them how to use the planetarium, how to operate it. And we said that, look, whenever you want to take the planetarium, please come, take the planetarium, do your shows and bring it back. And that is how we use the planetarium. It was a wonderful success. Even now people are using it. And Professor Narlikar, he said that there's this uh, uh, anti-superstition group. Uh, once, twice they borrowed it and they took it all over Maharashtra state. And they did this program. So the planetarium went continuously for about three months and did a wonderful job of it. So I had a lot to learn during this process. And uh, I would like to uh, add a few things and tell you about various uh, activities that uh, we did at the, uh, which we did at IUCA or our outreach programs committee, uh, outreach uh, activity. And uh, it was such a great learning process that when I went to Nehru Planetarium about five years ago, created the similar environment there because basically planetarium means we have a planetarium program which we show, but then extra planetarium activities is what we carried out. And one of the thing was to uh, do the telescope making. Uh, telescope making uh, normally, uh, if you talk to any uh, amateur astronomer, we talk about six inch or 150 mm diameter mirror. But what we found was in, at Ayuka we conducted this program but when you have to do make a six inch uh, class mirror, you'll have to spend something like three weeks to grind, polish, figure, and then get it alumni and so on. And we found that if you really want some school to have a telescope where you can at least see rings of Saturn, moons of Jupiter, possibly uh, some uh, binary stars and all that, four inch works beautifully. And you can complete from beginning till end a four inch uh, telescope just in about six to seven days time. And we started doing that and became very successful uh, venture. Uh, all things, materials are material is available off the shelf. And as far as the mount is concerned, because it is a lightweight uh, telescope, we could use even camera stand like this one. So you can get a camera stand from the market and use it. And this has become very successful venture. Uh, at Nehru Planetarium uh, in last five years, there are about 35 odd people already have made four inch telescopes. And uh, what we do is that now it has become a little more expensive, but about a few years ago, at, even at Ayuka, when we make the mirrors, we send it to Giravli to get it aluminized. But if someone is interested, we could actually chemically deposit silver and start using the telescope same evening that you have finished uh, figuring the telescope. So it is a very wonderful thing about the uh, uh, telescope making. Uh, one thing that other uh, I would like to highlight is that we also had uh, this internet telescope at Mount Wilson. There's a, there used to be a 16 inch telescope uh, and uh, we used to operate it from here. And I remember that even in this, in this very hall, we used to have some uh, 30, 40 children sitting and then we would operate the telescope uh, using the internet connectivity. And the thing came out also very nice for us because um, uh, when, we, uh, when it is about three o'clock or 3.30 here, it is three in the morning at uh, Mount Wilson. So there were no one takers. There were, there were not too many takers for the telescope. So we would get the time very freely. 
and we operated this telescope and really made use of it. Uh, presently, the telescope is, I think it is down at Mount Wilson. Now it is no more being used, but there are other, other amateur societies and other amateurs who actually gave away the time uh, for the telescope. So internet we have used and uh, in a various formats we use internet here. Uh, one of the thing was that uh, livestream.com allows you to have a free access uh, for webcasting, whatever your talks are. And I remember the first uh, 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 talk that we webcasted was Professor Narlikar's uh, second Saturday lecture demonstration program. I think she will, he will talk about various other activities of IOCA. So we did that and, uh, re and rep I repeated the same thing at uh, uh, Nehru Center. And uh, we have been doing that very recently. Uh, there was a virtual visit to CERN. There, was a, there were some people at CERN, observe, uh, CERN uh, station and they interacted with us and we had something like 200 people sitting in the uh, auditorium, uh, our sky theater and actually talking to people uh, in CERN, uh, 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 people working there and answering their questions. It became very nice and then uh, I've been talking to uh, Shomak and other people whether we can do the similar thing with the observatories in India or facilities in India that uh, we have. Lastly, I would also like to add something that uh, this, is, this is where we reach out to a large number of people and um, uh, whosoever is interested. But something else is important and that is to actually have a one-to-one -one connection and that what we are talking about astrology and uh, taking science. And that is to have a laboratory where children can go and do the experiments. At least in India, it is for sure that most school or almost all schools, uh, they do not have at the seven standard, eight standard, they do not have laboratory facility, even though some laboratory exercises are described for them. And uh, what normally happens is that uh, teacher, bring, teacher brings that apparatus on the stage, demonstrates the experiment and it is taken back. So what we started doing was that uh, we said that we will create a laboratory in the planetarium and with the processes already we had gone through two cycles of it and finally we got good lot of money to create these laboratories where we will take only for 20 children at a time and we'll have two or three trainers. They will show them how to do the laboratory exercises and in order to make this uh, uh, even more user friendly or probably teacher, uh, teachers friendly. What we have also done is that all these exercises which are given in the physics uh, uh, laboratory exercises is that we did almost everything using things which are available for us on off the shelf. That means the uh, Fleming's left hand and right hand rule. We just bent some copper wires and put the magnet and showed and the documentation is going on completely so that if anyone who wants to uh, do this, repeat this ex these exercises, it should, be, it should be possible for them to do that. Uh, we'll give a complete procedure. We are already started working on this uh, complete, uh, give the procedure and also talk about what alternative po possibilities could be. And thirdly, also where we have failed. One of the uh, thing which I would like to add at this point is that the electroscope at one point in time when we, I was a kid, I remember there was, they were called the gold leaf electroscope. And actually it works in a jam bottle with the aluminum foil which you wrap your food stuff with. So you take two strips and put a stick and it works. But the mistake there was that if you use the metallic cap, the charge get dissipated and it doesn't fly. So what you would have to do is you put a cardboard sheet on top and do it and then it works fantastically. You just take a plastic uh, rod or something, rub it on your hair and you see the flip, uh, the things going on. So these are the things which we have been doing. and. Uh, uh, I would actually like to tell all of you that uh, we are quite active in the virtual talks. So if you won't mind, maybe I'll write to you. If you would be, if you are interested, please do come to our planetarium virtually and talk to our uh, visitors and uh, uh, people who come, I mean amateur astronomers or general people who are interested in uh, uh, science. Uh, that is what I wanted to say. And I would like to end by saying, Paddy, thank you very much for being there. It has been a lot of inspiration. Professor Nalika was there, of course, but uh, working with you on a person-to-person -person level basis, I really enjoyed working with you and learned a lot. Thank you very much.
Okay, now if uh, okay, <laughs> if I have a convent or international school, this is our uh, standard uh, observation. If it's a rich school, they don't have questions. Actually, they want to tell you how wrong you are. The <laughs> or they want to tell you, I know better than you. That's the thing. But uh, when we have the uh, local schools or uh, normal, uh, not uh, rich kind of, you know, I'm talking about. Uh, well, we have uh, one of the questions which is normally asked is why Pluto is not a planet anymore. That has been uh, uh, black holes, dark, dark matter a little bit, but black holes have seemed to have gone off. Now no one really asks about black holes. One of the most common question is uh, uh, the, the uh, Pluto, why Pluto is not a planet anymore. Then people also ask about, uh, about comets. People do ask such questions. Not the Big Bang? Not very much on Big Bang. When we talk about the vernacular uh, medium, uh, people coming from villages, no, they don't ask. I think because uh, the, um, the question about Pluto is mainly because it has been removed from their textbooks and probably teachers are not yet sure why it should be. So that is the most common question. And then, then there are something like uh, how sun rotates or why you feel, how do you know that sun is rotating? Another question is why we see the same phase of moon. These are the questions essentially. Why is it hot in summer? Oh, no. <laughs> in fact, um, that happens in our uh, introductory thing. So when the children come, uh, we have an introductory session and then we did tell them that Earth axis is inclined and then uh, during actually uh, on 3rd of January, 3rd or 4th of January, we are closer to the sun than uh, 7th of June. So that has all, <laughs> we already do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so let's